All right, I'm here at Gartner Data and Analytics Summit in Orlando, and look who I have with me. James from Alter, Sanji from Sanjmo. Uh, so good to meet you both. Hello. And I know we met at uh, London. Big Data London, London, yeah, last right? October, I believe, yes. And today you know, we are so, so much of progress that Alter has made, and uh, I'm definitely looking forward to learning more from you. But and not that your faces are not familiar to the data and AI community. Mm -hmm. We would definitely lo love to learn a little more about you. So would you like to introduce yourself? Sure, no problem. Uh, my name is James Beecham. I'm one of the uh, co-founders and CEO here at Alter. Uh, Alter is a data security platform categorized uh, vendor uh, representing data security and data access governance uh, solutions for the data market as a whole. Uh, we've been around for about five or six years now, have had a uh, focus on cloud data warehouses the past couple of years. Um, we've got offices in Austin, Texas, and Melbourne, Florida, so actually not too far away uh, from where we are here in Orlando. Some of our folks were able to drive up, uh, so we get to experience some of the nice weather here. Uh, this is our third uh, Gartner Data Analytics uh, oh, Summit to be at. Um, the progress uh, through has been incredible. We're happy to talk a little bit more about uh, that in just a moment, but um, that's uh, who we are in a quick nutshell. Hi, my name is Sanjeev Mohan. I think this might be my eighth Gartner Data Analytics. I, I, I've lost count because for me, this is like coming home. Uh -huh. this, is my, this was my conference when I was a Gartner analyst and then I left two and a half years ago, started my own company, and I think I, we got introduced when I was a Gartner analyst. Uh, well, yeah, while you were still here, yeah. Yeah, covering the data space, sure. and you were the one that was kind of thinking about data access governance and right. you know how important that would be, and I think that's what connected us uh, initially. Right, uh, it was a huge passion for me then and now to understand the security aspects of, of data, because without that, it, the story is incomplete and we're never going to production. Right, or, or gets blocked or, or just delays uh, uh, rollouts, yeah. And you know what really uh, impresses me is that Gartner this year came out with a recognition of a category called data security Platform. Platform. Yep, that's wow. correct. Yes. I think they it was announced in January uh, of this year. The market guide was released in right. January of this year. Right. Yeah. Yeah. And congratulations for making it. Thank you very much. Yeah, we uh, were at the top of the list, uh, but just I think because our name is Alter, the, the letter A is up yeah. there. But I'll I'll take it as a win. Yeah. So the only only thing you need to do is you only have the company name. Other than a company name and a product, product name. name. That's <laughs> exactly right. And I've already talked to them. I don't know if we'll call it the Alter Data Security Platform or whatnot, but yeah. that was my first ring uh, to my rep. Shout out, Brad. Uh, I said, hey, I gotta, I gotta come up with a, a, a product cool name. name. Yeah, yeah, a cool name. <laughs> yeah. uh, so yes, that was that was the one thing that I, I feel we missed in. But uh, yes, yeah, it's uh, incredible to be included uh, in that category. Um, watching it kind of grow and, and, and evolve, especially in the kind of past two years that we've been here. Um, we really have kind of seen the need for the, the CDO and the CISOs organizations to converge. Right. Um, and, I, and I really do believe that that's what this category is gonna be, gonna be here, to, here to help do. Yeah, and with Alta, I'm definitely pretty sure about, you know, you guys are getting into the game pretty fast, even in the enterprise world. Mm -hmm. So do you want to share something around the challenges as well? Of what, what's Alta focusing in terms of the challenges? What do you see in the future? What's coming up and how are you solving those problems? Because I think that's one of the most important uh, key question for a lot of enterprise leaders as well. That, mm -hmm. okay, now we know the problem, but what's about the solution? Why is no one talking about that? I think a lot of the problems are still kind of growing and developing uh, in, in this area. When data was living primarily in the on-premise area, um, they had years, almost decades, yeah. right, to, to build out these data uh, security platforms, everything from database activity monitoring to privileged access management, at-rest protection, classification, access control, uh, kind of the list goes on. Um, with this kind of monumental shift to data in the cloud, data meshes, data products, um, data is no longer living in just one place. And so how do you have a security solution that took 10 years, and in some cases tens of millions of dollars to build, how can I in six months replicate that uh, in kind of the new buying model of a, a per user or consumption based? Um, so I think that's something that is very important to us is to be able to kind of match what the market is needing right now, right. combine all of those uh, required stack solutions together and deliver it in a way that's consumable, both from a, a SaaS delivery, but also from a, a price perspective. You know, I, I want to add one more thing to what you said. Uh, 
typically what we have done is we try to apply security at the very last endpoint, yes. which is maybe the cloud data warehouse. But what about all the security pieces that are needed when we do ETL? Yeah. Exactly and, correct, you know, yes. So I wrote this document called Shift Left Security because I feel that security needs to be applied across the board. Security is everyone's responsibility. It's like, you know, the CISO, CDO comment. Right. It used to be that the developer was incented to write the code and not care about security. It was somebody else's problem. Mm -hmm. But you cannot do that anymore. So, so we have to provide that security apparatus to all the personas in the life cycle. You know, when you think about how these platforms are looking to scale, they're leveraging many different capabilities, right? Snowflake being one of them, Databricks being one of them, but the the, the blob stores, S3, um, uh, leveraging some of the kind of intermediate uh, storage areas uh, that are still on-prem. Um, you know, if you want to have a cohesive strategy that's going to look to bring data into the forefront and make it available for sharing and for products, uh, that has to be contemplated at, at, at every level. Um, I think that's where this data security platform category is really emphasizing the, the SaaS delivery um, because you can kind of network uh, from almost anywhere in the world of these places and have a consistent uh, you know, model in there. So as potentially sensitive information lives in unstructured formats in S3 before it gets dumped into Snowflake uh, and then transformed by DBT, you know, at, at, at every one of these, these levels, you have to contemplate this. And that's where we really like some of our ETL partners like Matillion um, that are really focused on, on this problem and um, you know, helping customers understand kind of from end to end how this will work. But it's getting bigger and harder every day. And I think that's what part of the challenge that, that I like and the Alter team likes is you know, how are we going to adapt to yeah. these new growing uh, solutions and make sure that security can be there for, for everyone. Yeah, like I say, you know, data is a victim of its own success. We have more users, we have <laughs> exactly. more use cases, we have more data sources, yeah. we have more volume, yeah. we got batch, we got streaming, we got transactional, analytical, right. now, and now we are structured and unstructured. Unstructured, right. true. So, so this, uh, the data space has become very complex and uh, very easy to lose sight of how this data is moving, where is security, where did, yeah. we, where did security fall through, and businesses will not put something into production unless they have the guarantee that the data is going to be safe. And there's a, you know, there's a, a one major follow on to that too, you, you mentioned the, the growth of data and the size and the scale. Uh, you know, security has the problem that it's a trade-off between performance and security. Right. Um, and so when you are moving at the speed of data, you know, using a, a modern lingo or, you know, slang kind of term thing here, uh, security can't slow you down. Um, and so when we talk about we live in a millisecond world, um, that's that's what we mean. I mean, these sometimes the analytical queries can take minutes to run, but the pipelines and the processes that feed them operate at, at milliseconds or even nanoseconds in, in some cases. And so it's important for us to be able to support some of these large enterprises that need to do 250 million uh, you know, oh, encryption wow. or decryption operations per day. Um, and so I think that's one of the major differences that, that I'm hoping to educate folks on between security of you know, traditional OLTP type workloads yep. and the OAP workloads is the OLTP workloads are very predictable uh, you know, cool. in their nature and much smaller data sets and they don't have people directly accessing the data. The o OLAP world is very different, right? We're in petabytes and exabytes. We've got entire teams of data scientists directly accessing data. Right. Um, and so those challenges are different for businesses and that's exactly why platforms like Alter are leveraging uh, tools we have today to solve the OLAP problems as well as the OLTP problems and doing it as a single platform together. And, and not to mention, we are constantly having new uh, regulatory compliances coming oh, yes. up picture, right? <laughs> yes. So, so now we, we all know about GDPR. GDPR, right. Uh, but you know what happens in two days? Two days, on Wednesday, the EU AI Act gets signed. Oh. And once the EU AI Act gets signed, it's they gonna are go, going to fast track it. Yep, it's going to go through. Yeah, yeah exactly, and then and California then, will have it next. Yep, oh, California, wow. see yeah. California started with CCPA, yeah. then CPRA. CPRA. Yeah they're going to have it. And then you'll have 50 states in the US, you'll have China, India, Singapore, Thailand, it's like you name oh it. Oh my right? goodness. So, yeah. so the point here is, if you have proper protection in place, mm -hmm. 
then you don't have to worry about these individual compliances Correct. because it's like if you fix the roof, you don't have to worry about a rainstorm. Right, mm -hmm. right. So if, if there's a El Nino event, fine, I have a good roof. So if you get that protection, mm -hmm. then, uh, then it, uh, a new compliance becomes a checklist. This is fantastic. Actually, it brings me to something which is very interesting about the future as well. Like, we're talking about something which is in the data security world as well. Things are kind of changing very rapidly. Mm -hmm. Like, on Wednesday, you say, oh, there's an EU Act which will be signed. Mm -hmm. yeah. And there'll be so many more compliances that might come into yeah, the game. Exactly. So, how do you see the future, James? Where do you see it going in terms of, say, in the next six months? I'm not going to even ask for a year. Mm -hmm. In the next six months, what can the enterprises expect? Uh, what can the data security companies expect? Yeah, and how are you looking at it? I think there's a couple of aspects to it. The one that's been kind of forefront on everyone's mind, if you look around here, you see AI. Um, and a lot of AI discussion has being, uh, is, is being carried out now in terms of productivity for business. But right. one of the uh, fastest adopters of new technologies is always the bad guys, right? And, and so we talk about regulations as being uh, privacy focused or kind of cumbersome focused, but we have to always remember that that data is valuable and people want access to it. Right. Uh, they're now making uh, AI generated worms uh, that are going to be self uh, inflicting and self growing. And so I think one of the challenges that security people are waking up to now and realizing is it's not going to be humans on the other side uh, uh, looking at how to get into their, their data lakes yeah. uh, and, and their data warehouses. It's going to be software and in some cases auto-generating and kind of auto-growing oh software. Yeah. And, and you know, that sounds scary at, at first, and I'm sure DEF CON is going to cover this in, in complete yeah. uh, you know, horror uh, at their conference, but having a foundational layer of trusted things that we know work and are proven to work is going to be, I think, what folks are focused on in the next six months. So making sure that, that you've got your, your encryption standards set correctly, you've got all your key management aspects done, access governance is done to a least permission model, um, and what we've learned with security over the years is complicated security does not work. Uh, True. It has to be simple. You have to have very, very prescriptive ins and outs for your data. Exactly. And security has to be there with all those. So that's what I think is going to be happening in six months is folks are going to be making sure that uh, that the roof is on, that the doors have bolts and locks, mm. that if we were trying out any new sophisticated camera-based security things, turn those off, right? We, we need to go back to things that we know will work because the landscape is going to evolve very quickly here. I love it. The, and the threat landscape in particular. Yeah, this is this is amazing. And that's why I love talking to James and Sanjeev because they both can go into the conversation in so depth. <laughs> but thanks for again doing this. Uh, we Thank can't you. wait to see the next three days are super exciting. Yep. So definitely looking forward to hanging around more. And uh, for those who are here, they can definitely visit Alta. Yeah, please, uh, boost uh, 651. Uh, we're here, we've got uh, uh, executives from every uh, division and group here within the business, so whether you're product, whether you're CDO, whether you're CISO, come on by, we'd lo love to talk to you. Awesome, this is great. Thanks once again, James. Thanks, Thank Sanjeev, you. for yeah. visiting The Robert Show. Thank you. Awesome, thank you.